everyone, and welcome to Born Under Punches, the show where we lure people into Kelly's basement and force them to play games with us. Uh, I'm your host, Nicole, and joining me tonight is my co-host, Kelly. Kelly, why don't you come on out? I'll come out in a minute, Nicole. You'll never guess where I am right now. I, I couldn't possibly. I'll give you, I'll give you guesses three, and if you're correct on any point, I will. I don't know what what, what kind of concession do you want in this negotiation? Um, I, I if, if I guess it right, are you gonna take the scarf off your head? No, uh, I don't understand the question. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were okay. I thought you were asking if we had uh, if I had any concessions. Okay, um, are you uh, hiding in a bunker on the Ukrainian border? Uh, not yet. Okay, um, are you <clears throat> floating in a cloud over a sea of marbles? Metaphorically, yes, um, but not. Uh, not literally. Like, where where am I literally right now? Um, are you hiding under a scarf in your own basement? Well, I thought I'd bamboozled you. I was really excited for the big reveal, and you completely took the wind out of my sails there. So, oh well. I am sorry for doing that. I, um, yeah, I thought that you were asking me what concessions I wanted because I was going to get a prize for guessing it right, but the prize was you coming out from under the scarf, so I guess I did. And, um, yeah, here we are. Well, then everyone wins. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about before we introduce our guest, or do you want to just get straight into it? I kind of wanted to do over, of because last week I completely whiffed on whatever your prompt was, so I want you to, I would love for you to you know, prompt me to talk about something and me not fuck it up. Sure. Do you want to go with the prompt from last week and then you can uh, go from there? Or should I, do I have to think of something new? I only have uh, one good idea I, per I month, so. I don't care, Nicole. It's your show. I guess it is March, so I could probably come up with a new idea. Um, tell me, what is your skincare routine like that you look so good? Uh, it involves, so we have, uh, the cameras here actually have like um, little bits of tape over them that uh, that do that automatic filtering that, that Zoom offers. Ah. Um, so yeah, everyone's, everyone, this is why everyone in the show looks so incredibly hot all the time is the, it, it's just kind of the, the really fucky camera setup we have. Um, although we have, uh, we have issues with the cameras. Uh, well, some of the cameras make everyone look much wider than they are. So mm -hmm. rest assured that everyone in this room is like extraordinarily in shape. Um, and uh, anything else you see, that's just, yeah, sorry, that's a bad webcams. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. I do, I do like the broad shoulders. So let's get the little wider lens really gives that, that, that look. Neat. Yeah, ex exactly. I initially wanted like trick funhouse cameras so I could look uh, really jacked. Um, yep. But uh, it didn't work. Hmm. Right on. Um, speaking of fun houses, do you want to talk about who you've lured into your basement tonight? Uh, I do. I'm a little troubled that I will not be able to pull this person away from uh, the record shelf. It's so, so good. <laughs> be able to buy some time by uh, by like set by doing that uh, plan spiel you had about who the guest is and. What yeah. They are. Um. So. <laughs> Why don't other so... people? Our uh, guest tonight is a local Edmonton man who says words for money, um, Graham Moseman. Uh, hi. Your record collection is so weird. <laughs> like, none of it makes sense, and I want all of it. Oh. It's so dumb. You can have it when I die. I mean, that's, I know, I'm sad. I just met you and you seem lovely. And you lured me into your basement. Well, we, all have so to, we all have to die someday. I was so disgusting. Yeah. Well, this show is actually um, like going to end in a fight to the death. So you better hope that he's the one to die. Oh, you actually man. inherited all of his things as like a prize for winning. 
I uh, yeah, I have a I have a, a bum shoulder that's held together with mashed potatoes and hope. So mm. have fun. Go for go for the shoulder. <laughs> We're not so different. I have a shoulder bum. It's uh, it's it's a bum that can articulate on like any axis. You have your articulated bum. Yeah, that's who. That's this is why I have to be behind the desk because like it would be so distracting because people would just notice. I feel so safe in this basement full of robot ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! Mm -hmm. It's it's all natural. You get organic robot? No, and it's just I was born this way. You know, you know that's an organic. I mean, it's like the um, the weird the weird organic spaceship people. Uh, from all the canceled Star Wars books, the Yuzan Vong, nothing. All right, well, cool. We're uh, hi, I've had sex before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. This is like, I'm glad that we have like the same level of nerd as everyone else on the show. Um, Ian, no, who's not, not me, our, our GM swears that he's not a weeb, but he makes an anime reference in every show that we make, and our producer is. A fully admitted weeb so Ooh, fun mm. fun fact i used to run the uh anime section of the west edmonton mall hmv uh once oh, upon yeah. a time, i knew you ran a section of an yeah. hmv yeah it was my i didn't know anything about it speak on that um i knew what one piece was uh and i and i had seen like yeah, it's, it's a swim which which piece just, that, just one just a single just one, just one. Yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I didn't watch it. They were like, "Ah, you're overweight and probably watch a lot of TV. Have an anime section. Go no, nuts." No, I told you it's just the camera. <laughs> oh, oh no! You've had, you've actually been you've had like a warp funhouse mirror in your house the whole time. My God! And you've just have a credible body dysmorphia. Wow, why is my self confidence so bad? That's uh, cool. I don't know. <laughs> I've only just met you. <laughs> uh yeah. West Edmonton Small HMV. Big fun times. I was in love with the girl that ran the punk section. I was mm. 17. What a world. That's she really didn't want to find this thing? Uh, sort of. I actually didn't learn her name until I knew her for six months because mm. her the name she told people was different than her actual name. Okay. Uh, yeah. What, what was her punk name? Uh, Cat. Mm. And mm -hmm. her real name was Cynthia. And that was apparently very not cool. It was... Uh, oh. Anyway, hi. Sorry, that was me when I was like 17, 18. How's it going? I'm, Cynthia's I'm not... not a very punk name. That's fair. No, yeah. Cynthia, everyone can be a punk name. You can be as punk as you want. It has sin in it. Yeah, the, you're right. You could do like sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no the cat's out of the bag. They're going to know there's somebody else on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that mean we have to introduce him now? Yeah, let's bring out our um, weeb junior, oh. Ian. <laughs> Time. I swear to God, I'm not a weeb. But maybe I am. <laughs> Did you kill the <laughs> But kill maybe itself? half the time we missed a perfect shot. Yeah, missed a yeah. perfect lyric. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> why HMV never like, fucking hired me. <laughs> Wait, why? Uh, oh yeah, pro probably when I was like young. Yeah, and who, yeah, I did. Yeah. Didn't you got a sweet shirt with a pink logo on it? What more could you ask for? I also applied for an HMV and got turned down. It was horrible. You missed nothing. I mean, I ended up working at Bath and Body Works, so I, I don't think that was better. <laughs> I think that was probably worse. <laughs> I had to lotion up old ladies' hands. It was definitely worse. Ooh, that, yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, I, I mean, hate that. We, plus, you got to get into the creases. You got to pull back the skin. It's like a. It's not like a wiener. You don't have to like pull back any foreskin or anything. It's just like oh. it's just regular hands. Oh, I yeah. was I was thinking of a chicken, um, mm. but you know, like a dong works too. Dogs are cool. There's, there's we always we like... always circle back to wieners. Just to <laughs> there's, all, there's really a lot of different types of skin that you have to pull back for various reasons. Let's try and list them all. Face, you gotta pull it back for food. Oh, uh, yep. Is that like opening your jar? Yes, <laughs> it's pulling open your face hole. That's that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, who's next? Ooh. I guess every time you look at something, you peel your eyelids apart. Or when you blink, yeah, you're peeling oh, them down. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes, like when you have to put like ECG leads on someone, and they have like they're large, or just they have a lot of like sag in there. You know, generally if they have like you know 
traditionally female breasts um you got to like actually lift those up and kind of like maybe like you know hopefully they're not too sweaty or you get kind of like boob cheese sometimes so that, mm -hmm. that skin you got to pull back because I mean, everyone knows that right feel real boob safe cheese. in this basement yeah <laughs> <laughs> first, the first question we ask the entire group is tell us about a time you had to pull skin off of something so yeah let's maybe change the subject actually yeah let's let's move to the topic of how you where you are at where you're at in life that you feel comfortable walking into a stranger's basement having never met them i mean this is gonna sound super like dorky and lame um i find people who play tabletop role play games by and large don't suck um, like, I mean, just, I mean, often you see the law of averages, you're going to get like a shit DM or you're going to find someone who's just kind of a goober, but for the most part, yeah, no goobers here, like, well, I mean, yeah, but like there's, there's different, there, are you like the, like the Derek Fildebrandt making up stories about masks and coffee shops in Calgary kind of goober, mm. or are you just like, oh, look at that guy rolling dice. Like, look at, look at her with her speakers and headphones. That's so cool. What a bunch of goobers. <laughs> like, there's a difference in the there's a difference in the type of goob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the consistency, the viscosity. <laughs> the vis the goob's yeah, that's the flavor that's of the goob, yeah. if you will. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I've done a lot of podcasts before. And usually when someone's like, hey, do you want to come play games? I'm like, yeah. Also, do you know how long it's been since I played like tabletop role play in person? Like, I just went back to Edmonton. I'm getting weird. Guys. Well, and this time you were probably also excited because you're like, "Wow, this is not a podcast. Even it's a, it's oh, a whole different thing." It's like, I just it's get the, the microphones are yeah, live stream totally different. Yeah. It's great. Well, it's basically it's basically what you do. It's it's radio. You know, like it's it's happening live. People are presumably listening to it in their cars, um, or on a stage because you told me to come from off stage and we'll be in front of a there's many ways we can prevent that i don't know i'm yeah like, podcasts don't have stages i'm a i'm a don't ham i like i like buds and microphones it's fucking sue me i don't know this is this is good <laughs> this is a, that's actually like that's one of the reasons i was excited that you said yes because i was like this is a professional microphone talking person he can carry the whole show and we can just like yeah i just i just talked for four hours for my day job i'm, I'm like i'm getting small I'm starting, but I'm like, put me in character, man. I'll you, go nuts. You talk for four hours continuously? Oh, fuck no. No, our people at the AM station do. I don't. I was but, a little concerned because I was like, does he know that they're actually like playing music for a lot of that time? Or is he just like <laughs> going off about like, well, here's what I think about the mandates and like, here's my take on Ukraine. And it's just like, you know, the fucking yeah, all, all this, all white stripes are playing and he has no idea. He has no idea of this music. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't talk over the white stripes. I'm not a monster. No, you're talking under them. Like your mic is cut, and you're just like. And furthermore, if I was in charge of Kazakhstan, and like you know, you know what? Though, during an ad, break. I have I have 100 percent scenes. I oh, I can't even say see. I've seen kids because I've done this. Mm. I did a break the other week. Um, where you because like we're called Google breaks in radio because you have like a break in music and you say words. Mm. Uh, I did an entire break that was really not good. Like it was real. I knew once it was going into it, I was like, oh, I don't have my out. I'm getting brain jumbled. This isn't good radio. Mm. And then I realized about 40 seconds in that I hit the wrong button to turn my mic on. It was just off. I know. I, yeah, I hit the down button instead of the up button. And uh, no one heard a thing. Wow. So I got to be Thank like, to hit the next song and then redo the break and make it not be garbage. Oh, wow. What was that? Like a whole minute? A whole minute of a mic off. Imagining making a mistake like that. I cannot imagine. <laughs> What do you do? Yeah, yeah right. Like, you definitely haven't done entire episodes like that. Like that would just be crazy. Hmm. Yep. So here's I have actual questions about radio. We can yeah, get sure. we can back back to being stupid, but I'm very interested because so like because you're you're not like uh Chuck is not an independent station, right? It's it's on chorus. Yeah, yeah. We're on we're we're part of the chorus radio network. Right. Um which is not owned by Shaw. That's something that like right wing loonies like to throw at us, being like, Yeah, you're just owned by Shaw. Yeah, we're not. Don't they we're not our, corporations? Well, well we're sort of we're sort of incestuous between the two. Like people are on the boards of the of Shaw and Chorus that are on the boards for both. Mm -hmm. We are technically separate companies. Right. Is that like a conspiracy theory that like oh you're owned by Shaw? So, but like, what's the conspiracy there then? Like, is Shaw? Um, like you know what? Depending on who's texting in, uh, the word Soros will come up a lot, mm. and globalists. So, oh right, Soros. I forgot that he's evil. 
I keep forgetting these things. things. Yeah, George, oh man, I get I get my talking points from Daddy George. He just texts me every morning. Here's what to say about communism. People really like overvalue the the like impact of local shit. Like I've seen like this is kind of going in a different political direction, but I remember people on I think it was like the Alberta subreddit saying like i don't know something happened the ucb did something and they're like yeah man follow the money this is russian dark money and i'm like nobody cares <laughs> not a single person in another foreign care country cares about like the alberta school curriculum none okay, sorry quick quick wait, just quick slide now not to go all like really really into it man but like have you noticed how less trolly twitter is since people just shut the internet off from russia like uh, think about your feeds and how much less crummy and troll filled it is. I don't know. I just hang out in like little Discord communities oh, now. I'm even more hold off. That sounds lovely. It's Wait. so good. I, it's yeah. I don't have to. Okay. Agree. All right. All right. Cool. It's just uh, it's the weirdest. This guy goes outside and like touches grass. It's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's nutritious. That's great. That's right. Yeah. I um, mean, people will believe that because he looks like a guy that goes outside, but he's actually mostly playing uh, a company of heroes. A great That's game. The though. Second one. Yeah. Great game though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, yeah, radio, what? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, maybe you can't get into certain specifics, but, like, it, so working for a chorus, like, to what extent, like, can you pick songs that play ever, or is it, like, full program director, like, here's your list? Uh, that's a, okay, that's a really good question. So, um, our format is called, in the bills, it's called Classic Hits. So, yeah. can you, wait, can you give me the whole explanation in that? The bills yeah, okay, please. so in the bills, we're known as the Classic Hits format. And that's the best from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and today. And surely we can go off and play the greatest. This is really hard on my throat. I'm not going cool. <laughs> <laughs> right now. I can't tell he's saying it all. Um, I think we got the gist. People yeah, got to travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, so, we'll, we'll, you can we'll do your tabletop character voice in that. You can do your tabletop character in that voice the whole time, and we'll, we'll save that for later. I was planning to give him a Russian accent, and that's just not cool now. So, well, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, the. The that was we're fine. I've had a long day. That's okay. You can't okay. I have already. This is great. There's there's still just no dead air with you. You're a real pro. <laughs> um, yeah. So so we. It's not like we're given a list of songs to play. Like we as the programming staff, because I'm also the music director for the radio station. So we as a programming staff kind of sit down, look at our mentor stations and the most successful stations in our format, literally see what they're playing, kind of extrapolate that based on our own local testing of what does well. Shocker, it'll always be Jack and Diane. If you're ever wondering what the number one song is on Classic Hits Radio forever, it's Jack and Diane. Oh, I believe that. It's a classic um, song. It's a good song. I'm really happy because I just won a tiny victory because one of our top played songs was Toto's Africa, and I finally got <sighs> that bumped down by a category. So we're hearing it slightly less, and I take that as a fucking victory because I can't take that song. If I call <laughs> him and request it, do you have to play it? Just asking uh, for a friend. I don't have to play it, but depend if it if it's good, I might. And if you're not a dick, I probably will. Okay, I'm not uh, a dick. If I called in and requested Jack and Diane, would you play it? Absolutely. Well, because we're going to play it in an hour and a half anyway, so we're on <laughs> Yes, I'll get it over with. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so radio is so weird because, like, it's not, like, there's a thousand places, to, again, there's a thousand places to get Jack and Diane or, 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 or the hip or whatever, like, pick whatever your song is. There's a thousand places to get it. So the thing that's going to, that's keeping radio relevant in my mind, um, and you know, ratings wise, this is sort of kind of shown to prove is, is personalities and the people talking between the songs and the attitude of your of your radio station and the kind of brand you're trying to cultivate. So yeah, because you can get music anywhere. Who gives a shit? Like the music's whatever. Um, you gotta get the right music mix proper so you can hopefully keep people around when they're kind of listening when you're a background thing uh, or a background noise, which is you know what radio still is, um, always has been. And then having good personalities and good people through the microphone to kind of keep people around is, is I think what will keep people going and keep radio going. Um, whether that's, whether that's being delivered terrestrially or being delivered digitally, whatever um, people still crave like a local, a local person um, and, and having some kind of local content. So, Oh yeah. I've craved a lot of local people, but I've craved foreign people too. There's a lot of foreign people in my area. 
<laughs> like in your ad recommendations? Yeah, yeah, lots of like uh, Russian ladies, um, milfs particularly. Mm. They're always in my area. Yeah, I thought you were starting to sound like my grandparents. There, just saying, there's a lot of foreign people in my area because I get that yeah. every time I go over. They list. <laughs> They're like, there's people from this place and this place and this place, and they're just yeah, like, how do you know? They don't. <laughs> they don't. Writing, That's the trick. Why are you, why are you writing this down? <laughs> <laughs> they, That's the trick. Is they don't actually know. They just know the names of three countries, and they know like the skin, general skin tone of the people from those countries. And so then they see someone with that skin tone, they just assume that they're from from one of those three countries, and then they make a little tick in their notebook. Yeah, so like the three countries I assume are like China, Mexico, and Africa. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it, yeah. Maybe something for the Middle East, I don't know. I guess that's four. Yeah, that's fair. So, so yes. So like but, so <laughs> yes, so yeah. I feel like <laughs> so that, middle, I, that research though. Sorry, Nicole, I'm talking over you. That's okay. I'm used to it. So I feel like the Middle East just get like if anyone from like Middle East or any of those countries just gets looped in with Mexico. So it's true. <laughs> oh, oh boy, the, the Middle East would happen. Though. The Middle East is the Mexico of Europe, is it not? <laughs> yeah, just ask my grandparents. No. The Middle East. I think is it's the... its own. There are, wow, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a college Let's dropout. Just throw away the whole suitcase. <laughs> Wait, can you say it one more time? I'm trying to unpack it mentally. No, you just have to throw away the whole suitcase. Yeah, do I have to? Yeah. Damn. So, Mexico, Mexico is... My the... question was, that research that is being done of, like, well, how do we retain listeners? Like, do they ever field test, like, what if we let the host slash DJ, like, just curate the entire four hours of music? Like, what if we did that? Have they tried it? Uh, yeah, it's college radio, and it sucks. I, like it. <laughs> I just, I mean, from a commercial standpoint, like, yeah. I'm not, you know, my, 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 I'm not here to be like, I'm breaking records, man. I'm yeah. changing the world. I'm here to hopefully help you get informed about something that's happening in Edmonton, laugh about something, and make fun of Derek Fildebrandt. Like, no one smiled when you took off your fucking mask, Derek. Tell us how you really feel. Oh, okay, geez. can you, I, can someone tell me what this tweet was? Because. I okay. am totally in the dark here. Up on screen. Uh, there is a way. I don't know it's, if uh, Josh is familiar with it, but we're about to find out if he knows how to put tweets up on screen. Um, but yeah, while we're at it, let's just yeah. keep rolling. While we're at it, who's Derek Hildebrand? Like, is oh, he in he's just yeah. he's like this guy that was like formerly deep into like Alberta right wing politics, and uh -huh. now he runs a shitty newspaper. Deep in as in like he was like running for something, or he was like, or he just talks. I think he was deputy just leader things. of of one of the right wing parties he did he was pretty yeah he's a something he was the leader of the freedom conservative party i think that sounds right anyway it's also just a job to fact check yeah he uh he, he put up this tweet today it's like today i walked into a downtown calgary cafe maskless as i walked in other people looked at me took off their masks and smiled hashtag Amy ledge and I was that like, sounds, sure. That sounds real. Yeah, like sure, sure definitely happen. And then, and then they were having babies, and you saw one of the babies, and the baby looked at you. Sure, Derek. And then the so, baby thanked him for saving its freedom and its future. And then the barista behind the till fell in love with them, and they got married and had little freedom baby. I'm just, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had all day. I'm so mm. grumpy about it. I'm sorry. He walked out of the cafe, and everyone on the street stopped and started applauding. Slow applause that built is beautiful. Yeah. People got out of their cars. And <laughs> a band came around, marching around the corner, and started playing the American anthem. <laughs> no, what, what's the the Brooks anthem? Does Brooks have an anthem? What? Brooks, Alberta. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think the guy's from Brooks. Oh, oh. I don't do know, towns the, usually have anthems? No, I don't know. The Brooks. Uh, oh, here it is. God, it's so good. Oh. <laughs> Nice, oh. profile, nice profile photo. Is this a time traveler? <laughs> <laughs> New from the Civil yeah, War. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he kind of looks he like he even looks like a douchebag, but then I was like kind of looking at him and I was like, he kind of looks like how Ian would look if he wore a suit. So <laughs> I take <laughs> back that know. comment that I never made. <laughs> you will never see that, and you never ever will. <laughs> it never happened and never will. Mm -hmm. He's kind of got the like 
like right wing chud militia haircut going, and he's wearing camo. Yeah, pants. camo and yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> he was really. I saw him walk up, and he just went straight to the basement. I was like, oh, that that's like looks like a man who knows where a basement is, and so I kind of. That's why. <laughs> That's, that's that's how I do. I was. I like at the, the point house. that you opened the door, and the only way you were to go was downstairs. You were still wondering where is the basement? <laughs> Which direction could it be? I've been standing here for point four seconds, and it still just <laughs> baffles me. Yeah, hey, basement. I live in a condo. Okay, I have everything handed to me. Mm. It's, it's a simple existence. Mister Fat Cat, he's got a condo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a place for my dog to sleep. That's good. Oh, you got a dog? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, refused to bring the dog on request. Well, I just, I, I, you, I okay. Yeah. To be fair, you're a stranger, and it's your basement, and he's willing to sacrifice himself, but he's not willing to sacrifice his dog, and I totally yeah. understand that mentality. Yeah, that's actually very admirable. So me, wait, I, if I murder you in the basement, who is going to take care of the dog? Do you make a plan for that? Uh, you know what? My girlfriend has the keys to my place, and so I actually also told her what the address was and how long I thought I'd be here. So oh, you weren't doing a bit with this next thing. Oh, oh fuck! That's, those are words I said, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no i definitely told. i was like hey i'm here actually she lives like a few bucks away so oh we're very close by He's, well speak on that how's the girlfriend how's the sex I was... <laughs> describe the coital arrangement you know how does it work i mean yeah. what frequency is the sex the thing that happens before or after the crying uh that I th oh i thought it was like a sandwich like, yeah like, i don't I mean, ask anyone here like any of us would know because yeah i don't know they're really asking for advice there's a lot of weeping, and it's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone has their own way of mixing sex and crying, and that's the beautiful thing about it is, like, it's 2022. You can do it however you want. Because I do the opposite of what he does. I do the inverse sandwich where it's sex, crying, and more sex. Mm. Well, that sounds hard on your tear ducts. Well. <laughs> there's only so wait, much There's so much cry fluid in the day. <laughs> yeah, and then you got to refuel. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah, I know. I'm saying that's less. Yeah, no, it's, it's like Diablo 2. Like you can only cast cry so many times before the skeletons get you. <laughs> there's a there's exactly a, like that. There's a limit. <laughs> that's that's yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying is his way has twice the crying. My way has twice the sex. Uh, yeah, an activity yeah. in which you famously lose no fluid. <laughs> it's lost to you. Those are uh, those those things are going on the stream, right? Those oh, yeah. little pop-ups like okay, good. Those are, they're great. They're That's wonderful. a true story. One of these two, uh the two people that are watching our stream is probably my partner, and yes, can confirm he does love Diablo. A Diablo super I mean Diablo still holds up. What a great game that is. God damn. Yeah. It's on the you take it wherever you want. Yeah. I just played through it for the first time. It was wonderful. Cutscenes are pretty neat. And so we've covered video games. We've covered animoy, uh, anime. Do we have animoy? any other animoy? Yeah, <laughs> animoy. <laughs> animoy is uh, it's it's like anime, um, except it's. I love watching the joke cogs turn. Yeah, and they're grinding. They are just just jamming bits together, and I'm not. They're not putting together, and I'm just waiting. Just. I mean, there's there's not really a lot of good like oi sounds to kind of make puns or oh. port my out of Ozzy 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 Oi 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 that's the one yeah. <laughs> Anim Animoy is like kind of like anime but like more like softcore porn and it makes me anim moist <laughs> 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 that's the only Oi sound I could come with I'm sorry uh, come yeah, up so with this is why I, didn't, I don't want to hog all the jokes and I just knew that like <laughs> Um, that Nicole was winding up with like the happy Gilmore golf swing to just like hit that one off the tee. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so, so I'm so happy I'm here. What a joy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't worry. We'll make you regret it soon enough. <laughs> I, brought, I brought my own dice. Come on, man. It sounds like a great time for a jarring tonal shift. What do you think, Nicole? Yeah. Not my favorite uh, kind of tone. You... Let's talk about alcoholism. Oh, cool. Oh. Let's go. That's like my favorite thing. Hell yeah. This isn't a bit. I genuinely really enjoy talking about alcoholism. <laughs> it's great. Go. Great. Your favorite part of it. Oh, because me, I'm the drunk. Yeah, cool. Well, um, we all are, but you're the only one who put it on Twitter, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was so, like, my alcoholism is kind of weird. Like, I, um, because to be honest, it's always really been public. Um, because, like, the last day I drank, yeah, I did. Yeah, some of my alcoholism has been very public. <laughs> 
Go on. Well, yeah. So, like the last, you know, I'll, you'll level with you. Like the last six months of my drinking time, um, the vast majority of it was on air at my job. Um, you know, I was working at X ninety nine in Calgary. Um, worked there for you know five years because you you call you're in Calgary, right? Yep, I listen to X ninety two nine. Yeah, you. I've, did you ever hear the old show? Maybe. Um, how long ago was that? Like, uh, I was there from 2014 to 2019. Uh, yeah, possibly. Probably. See, sorry, that was like, do you know me? That was the fucking worst. <laughs> um, you know no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, just, you know, for, for context. So like, Nicole, you can kind of back this up. Like, X as a station is very, like, it's very friendly and very, very human. Like, it tries really hard to, like, let the announcers do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I took that to the extreme while also being a raging alcoholic. So for like the last six months, like I was drunk on air most nights. Um, because I was just fucking miserable. I didn't like anything really. Um and you know, like I had kind of an anime. Of, of anime. And Cynthia. Oof. Um <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it all kind of came, you know, kind of came crashing down because I, I remember it was the night that the Raptors won their championship. Uh, I uh, I was hosting an event for a friend of mine, um, and there was, like, this after party. And I the, the event ended at 3. My show started at 6. I remember the event ending. I remember going to the after party, and then everything's just gone. And I got blackout at, like, 5 o'clock on a... Thursday afternoon um, went to work I have vague memories of doing the show um, I don't know how I got home to be honest I, th I think I may have gotten an Uber or something not super sure it's responsible you know, I, I, just, I, looked at, I just looked at my receipts and I had like beer delivered to the station and I had an Uber receipt so I was like put those two together um, and then yeah the next morning I was on my way to my therapist's office and um, I get a text from my coworker being like, hey, are, were you drunk on air last night? And I was like, no, I'd never do that. My head hurts and I threw up already today, but I wasn't drunk on air. Um, and yeah, I, I was sitting at the um, at an intersection. We had this thing where you can like pull up your, your, your show from your phone. And I pulled up one of the breaks uh, that I did. Uh, and I couldn't listen to it. I still haven't listened to it, um, but I saw that it was three and a half minutes long. Um, and my longest breaks were usually like a minute tops, maybe 90 seconds. So I was like, yeah, oh, you, I was very drunk on air last night. So I, I was really lucky because I'm on my way to my therapist's office anyway. And so I get to my therapist's office. I'm seeing her for like four years um, at the time. And I just like broke down. I was like, I think I'm a drunk. I was drunk at work. I've been drunk at work a lot, all the time. Um, so you didn't get in trouble with work. You just like, oh no, no, I, I, I got another text from my boss while I was in therapy, being like, hey, you need to come to the station now. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. And so I go from therapy to my boss's office. I fucking break down, being like, yep, hey, I'm not coming to work today. I don't know if I'm coming to work next week. I gotta go find a rehab center. I gotta go figure my shit out, and I gotta not be a, a drunk mess. Um, and apparently saying that like, Hey, I'm not coming to work and I need to go get help. Uh, I have, I have found out after the fact that probably saved my job. Um, cause if I had been obstinate or fought it or, or whatever, I probably would have been, I would have been fired with cause for sure. So, you know, for me, my alcoholism has always, always been really public. Um, I, cause I was gone. I got suspended for a few weeks and the audience didn't was curious as to where I went. And a few people had been like, had noticed and like wrote on the Facebook page, like Graham sounded pretty drunk. And then he was gone for a few weeks. What's going on? So, um, yeah, I kept everything kind of under wraps until like a year later. Um, after I got, had been sober for a year, uh, I did a video on, on the X99 page saying, Hey, like I've just hit one year sobriety a year ago. I was drunk as fuck on air. <laughs> And um, here's what happened. And so that was in, uh, I hit, well, I was at one year sober in 2020 of June. And so like early pandemic, everyone's still like scared. And um, I lost my job a week later from a COVID layoff, which just sucks. That's how the business goes. 
COVID um, layoffs for radio? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the station went from making, you know, $9, $10 million a year to zero. Because every advertiser pulled pulled their advertising. Oh, because they lost money. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You never think about, like, how the, like, thing just all moves down the chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it got me. So, and, and you know, that was really hard. But, you know, after that, like, I had, I, I got into recovery and, um, stayed sober and haven't had a haven't had a relapse which is pretty cool so i was checking my app the other day i think in like nine days i'll have been sober for a thousand which is pretty cool yeah i have a sobriety app that that i uh that i There's use an app for fucking everything that's awesome oh it's great oh man i have apps to find like different recovery speakers um because like so i'm we're you know right on the that's I, I'm so we're not on on TV, radio, or films. So I'm I'm I go to AA, um, and there's like different apps you can like connect to meetings or go connect to um, different AA speakers, and like that's just what's worked for me. Um, I am not one of the addicts that's like I know people in AA that are like, "Hey, is the only way to make it work." I don't think that's true. I think that's a fallacy. Um, <laughs> AA works. Great. AA works great for me. But it might not work for everyone else, and that's cool. Like, if you want to get sober, I think there's a way to do it that's not within this structure. But this structure has just worked for me. So, um, yeah, I mean, even like since then, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've done talks at school assemblies on mental health. I've been a, a men- I didn't counter. I was a mental health public speaker for a long time. Uh, I would go out to schools with counter board of education and talk about my mental health because I was a depressed sack of shit for a long time and still kind of am. Um, so yeah, like talking about mental health and talking about anxiety or depression or whatever has always been like a thing I've done. And then when it was super apparent that I was a drunk, it was just easy to kind of keep going like that. So, um, you asked earlier, sorry, I've kind of rambled. What do I like about being an alcoholic and being drunk? <laughs> what um, do you, I guess. um, everything. It's great. Oh, like yeah. I have, I don't <laughs> like, I, I have a more clarity of where, my fuck ups are as a person right. and I have clarity of where I can go wrong. And when I know that I am, I'm, 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 I'm falling into addictive behaviors and, and how to get myself out of them and the people I can reach out to if I want to. And I have a structure in which I can kind of live my life and structure my life that I won't be a, that I won't be a drunk piece of shit. I'll just be a regular piece of shit who's sober, uh, <laughs> which is cool. Oh and, yeah, you're absolutely in good company here. And like, also, I never, I don't get hangovers, and that's cool. Like, oh my god, being like, again, you have to understand for someone who drank like every day for years, like waking up and like having a functioning brain, like you know, God willing, I'll make it to to three years sober in June. But like, that still blows my mind when I like wake up on a Saturday and be like, fuck, I can take my dog to the park and not throw up. This rule. Yeah, you can find new and unique ways to feel awful, like reading Derek Hildebrand. I mean, I mean, I feel awful, but then I make fun of them and I feel better. That's no, good. I'm like the eat two stuff and make muffins and tell myself it's because I'm busy. Uh, I feel like that kind of piece of shit. This is going back a tiny bit, but right before you brought up AA, you said, well, this isn't radio, TV, or film. Is there like a clause that's yeah, like, literally. like wrote in a typewriter before? They're like, no radio, TV, or film. And literally. you're like, loophole, loophole. Literally, you like, show it to them when they get mad at you. Like, <laughs> Don't say anything about weird live streams. <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's this thing called the you know, your 12 steps yeah, uh, and then your 12 traditions. Yeah. And tradition six, I want to say. Um, is maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. Yeah, I know. I know that's a rule. I'm just think. I think it's very interesting that you're like, well, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care about the spirit of the rule. I will talk the shit out of this. On, I mean, to be fair, no one will ever see this. But I, well, you know what though? There's there's other people that very much fully violate, like violate that spirit, and mm. you know, um, like oh, Dax Shepard from his, you know, one of the Bjorn Trex, but it's one of the biggest podcasts on the planet. Like they make like. Eight ten million dollars a year, yeah. and he's like, "Yep, I'm an AA. They say you're not supposed to be open like that, but uh, press, radio, and film, baby." Um, and like the dude had, so that's just one example. I'm not you know, casting a judgment on on that, um, but I mean, I've also been caught. Like I've talked about, you know, I've talked to, there, I've talked about being an alcoholic on the radio before, and like certain language I've used and certain phrases I've said. I had someone call and be like, hey, "Are you a?" Are you an AA? I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> but what do they say? What do they say? <laughs> and so, like, I've been caught before. Um, but, like, anyone who knows me, I'm really upfront and frank about it. Um, you know, even if I've been, I'm at, like, a wedding or something. And someone's like, hey, you're not drinking. What's going on? I was like, oh, ah, turns out I'm really good at drinking. Like, I'm really good at it. And I had to stop. Yeah, I didn't want to embarrass everyone. Show them up. Be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers want to see a blackout. Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, like, I've been caught before. But, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm of the belief that, like, at least my family all knows I'm in AA. My friends all do. Um, you know, part of the program is very much... Um, you know, the 12th step is, is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. We, um, pledge to practice these principles, um, in all of our affairs and, you know, take the message to the alcoholic who still suffers. Right. So, um, it's built into the program to like, be there for, for you to be there for other people. And, and it, I've lucked out cause I've had moments where, you know, people have been like, hey, I think I might have a drinking problem. And I'm like, oh, are you, are you like drinking and driving to work a lot? Like, yeah. I was like, oh, do you, are you, do you drink and can't stop uh, uh, most of the time? And I'm like, well, well, mm. probably a problem. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, you know, we're, I, I feel, I feel kind of bad because I have some friends who have a very healthy relationship with alcohol and they'll be like, oh, I went on this like kind of, you know, bender the other day. And then, like, kind of give me the side eye and, like, waiting to see if I'm, like, going to judge them or something or if I think that they're drunk. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. You you said that happened a week ago and you haven't drank since and you seem you seem pretty fucking normal to me. Like, when my benders end, I start another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got to keep your own mental. Yeah. Obviously, right? So, yeah, and it's, it's so funny because, uh, yeah, everyone has their own you know, different relationship with, like, the trauma around alcoholism. Like, you know, knowing a legit alcoholic is really fucking sad. It sucks. Like, a practicing alcoholic, there's a few things more depressing. Because <laughs> we're fucked up. <laughs> like, how it's, like, presented as, like, a skill. I just I got, I just got <laughs> I, like, I'm better at it than you, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know everyone in this room. I just know I was really good at it. Mm, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that wasn't the challenge. No. <laughs> but do you want to give me some tips? Like, oh, Ian, do you want to give me a beer? And then we'll just you can, you can, give some, you can walk me through the process. And just um, you know that we're really going to challenge you on that thousand days thing. Deal, like we will break you tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the <laughs> Hey, he's like, oh man, he talked about it in the podcast. We're gonna get him. And they, like, <laughs> yeah. We're the counter AA. Yeah, group. they paid us to yeah. be like, yeah, go fuck him up. <laughs> How dare he? So um, instead of Alcoholics Anonymous, we we are alcoholics and we are anonymous. We yeah. work in the shadows. <laughs> alcoholics, <laughs> comma, anonymous. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's already what it is. <laughs> Never mind. Oh uh, man, I don't know it's cool. I like it. Um, I mean, I I I'd probably be dead to be honest. Not to get really dark with it, I'd be dead. If I didn't quit drinking by now. Mm. Like I drank and drank a lot. <laughs> like a lot. It's an expensive hobby too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, I used to have a problem with like drugs a lot more. So that was but That's I a more expensive hobby. Yeah, well, well it depends. Be. Depends. 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 Be. Well, because yeah. we were joking earlier, it was like, oh, you just came down to a strange person's basement and we're okay with it. It was like when I was in Winnipeg, I was very into cocaine. And one guy was like, Hey man, you want to come here like my underground record? And I'm like looking at the address. I was like, That's a really dangerous neighborhood. Sure, that sounds fun because, like, I had done coke with this guy at a party before, so it was like, bad. Ah, maybe there'll be more. Cool. That came from. Yeah. Uh, I've, the, I've the been in some spring, I can't wait to go. I've been in some weird people's houses at like 5 a.m., but you know, well, I'm not the one we're talking about here, so ah, that's you know. cool. I mean, it's cool. You seem pretty normal, it's, it's fine. This is actually, this <laughs> <laughs> can't be that all that bad. I mean, I, I was just gonna say, that's that's how Kelly and I met basically. I met him in a festival, and he was like, hey, do you want to hang out? I have some drugs in my tent. And I was like, what? Whoa. <laughs> wait, wait. That's how I met you, too. What festival? <laughs> First uh, off, according, <laughs> to, according to Nicole... The first time we met was in like university in a French class. Okay, but, sorry. Know, let me let me clarify. When I say the first, when I say when I met Kelly, I mean the first time he remembered meeting me because the first okay. three times he did not. Go on. You know what? That doesn't sound like something I would have done. Uh, I'm talking about the, uh, you know, immediately saying he and I have substances because, uh, you know, if my grandma's watching, I've never heard of substances. <laughs> and 
I uh, I Ellie was in charge of the harm reduction there, so there's no way I was doing anything uh, silly. <laughs> yeah, of course. The answer to That's the question not is, when I met you. You were wearing stuffed animal pants. <laughs> uh, those are good pants. I had to get yeah. away when I anyway. Uh, yeah, the answer to the question that was uh, Rainbow Fiddle, a, a festival that was fun until they fucked up and like couldn't give everyone their deposits back. But mm, ah, the joy of the small festival. Mm. The joy of the small festival. Yeah, it turns out hippies are not amazing at logistics. No, they're not. Hippies and commies actually both are really. <laughs> Gen Sorry, I was at a thing with commies this weekend, so I may have commies on the mind. Mm, They're generally bad at mind. logistics. Excuse me. What? Sorry. What sort of thing were you at with commies? Oh, it was just like it was a it was a public also, safety. Thing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, they were like they were like, hey, how's it going? I was like, we're from the Communist Party of Alberta, and I was like, oh, are you commies? They were like Trotskyites. I was like, that's cool. That's fair. Okay. We're, uh, uh, yeah, no, they were, they were pretty good. They were pretty, uh, they were lovely. They were really sweet. No, it was eight. Um, so I, I have some activist friends and there was this event, um, that was kind of like a community harm reduction event. We did like naloxone training, um, you know, had discussions on like how to deal if you have like really intense convoy people in your life, like how mm. to talk to them. And so it was really just like a kind of a community event, like a little blog party we had. How to know uh, if someone is following you with an ice axe. Uh, like if they're Trotskyists, they should, you know, should have learned this by now. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, there just happened to be some Alberta commies mm. that were, they were really lovely. Okay, if asking you for a friend, what do you say to someone if they're like intense convoy people in your life? Uh, Dad, I can't talk right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, my dad. I don't know what my dad believes. It's probably better that way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you're Graham's dad, call into the show and we'll, uh... <laughs> Oh, I love we'll Gary. We can't do chat. that to him. I love Gary. We can't do that to him. Um, I don't know. I just be like, that's a cool opinion you have. Do you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm running out of options. <laughs> yeah, just de de escalate the intensity of the conversation. Pro well, yeah, because we had to want to talk about it. And you don't have to well we, i mean you know there was a guy that came by the event this weekend and he was like he had a sign that was like canadians voting for trudeau is like a like a like like a chicken voting for colonel sanders and it was like oh okay and like talked to him for like 10 minutes he was really lovely he just kind of wanted to yell about the government what a great metaphor like he didn't go for like it's like sheep voting for a wolf like no chick i like that chicken that was good it was good i was, good. I was, it, was it was it was pretty good but yeah. like he just, I think ultimately most of them just want to bitch about the government. Yeah, fine. I think you're right. Oh, yeah. I get bitching fine. about the government. I'm, I'm totally down for that. It's so much fun. Yeah, you guys can just unite on that. And then that's the thing, right? And that's like, I mean, I mean, I used to write some pretty, when I was writing DM, like writing games as a kid, um, for like homebrews, I wanted a DM. Like most of them were about overthrowing, overthrowing something or other. So, yeah. yeah. That is like every like fantasy novel ever written as well. It's like there's an evil government. We got to get rid of them. They're oppressing better, us. Better fuck them up. So yeah, no, just just start start the conversation with board games and you'll be fine. Yeah, thinking of like a, a D and D campaign now where you're like a Canadian trucker and you're like, okay, you you. <laughs> so I was I was talking to my girlfriend the other week and I was throwing out different ideas for characters. One of them was genuinely, wow, what what would happen if like the Merchants Guild all simultaneously rose up and you just broke the economy oh, yeah. of your D&D world. Like, how would your characters manage this? Yeah, that, like, that, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. I would 100% play that game. Yeah, that would be very fun. Yeah. 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 Sorry, what was the premise? I was uh, getting yelled at about my microphone. What? Oh, like, if, if you were in, like, a, you know, kind of your standard fantasy D&D world, or even if you want to go, like, I really love Eberron as a D and D setting. If you were to go like kind of steampunk and cool with it, what would happen if like the entire economy of your world was just like, well, Fuck that! We're going to go march to the castle of the center of your country. Like, what would happen? How do you, if you, you have no merchants everywhere, they're all gone. They've taken up their caravans and moved. Like, oh, like a little horse and buggy convoy. To yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like that'd freedom be, convoy. That'd be a genuinely fun game to yeah. play, just to figure out the end game. Or is that just me as a DM? No, no, I, I, I love that. I was thinking about it too. <laughs> it's like there'd be like no NPCs to interact with. You like you go to the tavern and no one's there. Yeah. What What do you do? Like, yeah. what do you? How do you Twilight Zone D and D? Yeah, that sounds cool. I want to play that game. Yeah, totally. You just have to like read notes and like little things that they leave around. And it's like, <laughs> like, like, like an audio log in Outlast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or like. Uh, Fallout 76 or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd 
play that game. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to derail your thing again. <laughs> no, that, you, that was the you answered my question. Um, I mean, I our our all of our settings are like far far dumber than that. You know, like that that sounds really like high minded. Ours are like, what if you were Power Rangers in Atlantis? But that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so fun. Well, you missed out on that one. I you get, you get to play the pet one. Yeah. I hey man, I've already put like half a character together, so I'm stoked. I'm I'm down. Sweet. Nice. All right. Um I mean that was too early to segue to the game. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Talk sorry. more about uh I don't know. Um something about role playing. Go. Uh I do a break, you know. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go refill my water. Let's hear one of those famous breaks. Yeah, I'm gonna leave too. <laughs> uh, well, hey, it's 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 seven fifteen past the hour here on your internet dial. Well, boy, look out for potholes. There's a lot of them. Oh no! Uh, wow, those Oilers, they sure suck. Um, Listen, if this was the radio, I would tune in every day. Oh, oh hell, hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, I do. I do have a bit on my show um, called uh, called the Heckle thing, where I shout really specific and really kind of meaningless heckles at whatever team we're playing. Oh yeah! So you're just like you just you smell bad and no, it'll, and it'll, your mother. Oh uh, uh, no, more specific. Like, well, because you're playing Philadelphia, and I was like, "Hey, Philadelphia! The only cool thing about your city is the Liberty Bell, and you broke it. It's got a crack in it. I've learned that from National Treasure too." Like <laughs> well, one bridge having city, you know? Yeah. Do they have more than? Oh, there was like a famous Bill Burr rant where they were like booing him on stage, and he just kept he just kept like swearing oh, right, the whole time. Right, right, yeah, right. I fucking one bridge having city. I was like, That's it. <laughs> all right, yeah, it's all it's all dumb. Like if it was San Jose, I'd be like, ah, the best thing about your city is the Museum of Innovation. How about you innovate a better museum? Ah. I don't know, I'm doing it like Jerry Seinfeld now. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. well, it's San Jose. There's lots of Jose. It's not San Zid at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sansa Jose. <laughs> yeah, that's the bit. That's what thing I do on my. That's the thing that people pay me to do. So if we if we name a city, will you shit talk it? Oh hell yeah, uh, Paris. Oh look at you, Paris! All your buildings are short, so you can see your tower. Maybe, <laughs> maybe make your tower better than a triangle. You losers with your fucking surrender monkeys. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, devastating. <laughs> Uh, okay, do uh, Hamburg. Uh, Hamburg, you sound like the world's third worst meat. <laughs> third <worst>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know how I have jobs. About, uh, I want you to shit talk Kiev, Ukraine. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> That's a trap. That's a trap. Don't do it. No, no. In, you, in traditional Ukrainian Europe cities, pronounce Kiev. Why don't we all know that? Mark it better. Oh, I'm sorry about the war. <laughs> it's always good when your shit talk ends with an apology. Yeah, it's the Kyiv. Kyiv. It's it's two syllables, not one. I uh, because I posted, I I did a I did a Instagram reel about this and how not to call it Kiev. Yeah, call no, it Kiev. That I know. And then I had a friend text me. She's like, "Yo, yo, dude, it's." I, I speak Ukrainian. It's Kiev. And I was like, oh, two syllables. Fuck. Yeah, like key, like, and then the iv. You had an I in there, and I was like, you got it. No, you, you, it's, I can't speak Ukrainian, <laughs> man. I'm, because I was doing it correctly. I have the body of a, of a, no, the, even the correct way is incorrect, apparently. According to my, she did Ukrainian dance. I'll All trust right. her. Got the, that does seal the deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with the, with the shoes. Yeah. What do I know? I was learning Russian. I'm part of the problem. <laughs> Ooh. I'd like to draw your attention to this comment here. We could be famous if we bought, bought followers, primes and viewers. Hell yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't trust that if it wasn't for that Z in there. Tell you, <laughs> yeah. it's, tell you it's legit. Yeah, they know marketing. So wait, is this somebody commenting on our Twitch stream right now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's an old one. Uh, yeah, it's gone now. I think. Oh no, I wanted them to call into the show. Well, shout out to whoever was was playing the remake of Diablo Two. Hell yeah! Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my partner. <laughs> uh, our, our two biggest fans in the whole world are Nicole's partner and uh, me having the stream up to monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
but I they're mean, dedicated fans. You know, it's a small right? <laughs> fan base you want to build. So, like, I threw this out of my Twitter a little while ago because uh, I was like, "Hey, hey, guys! Like, what do you want to see? I'm like, do you want more stuff from my radio show? Do you want me to make more stupid jokes? Do you want me to fuck off and stop asking?" And I was like, hey, what kind of content do you want to see? Like, just from my feed. And I was blown away because the number one thing that got voted up was Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And I was secretly hoping that it would be start a Twitch stream so I could just, like, play Baldur's Gate for hours on online and call that content. And I was a little disappointed. It was, like, the fourth le- the fourth most requested thing. So what you're saying is your, your fans, what the people want is more role-playing. Yeah. So, like, what you need is a platform through which you can, like, DM role-playing games on a stream. Did I just play myself or why I came into this basement? <laughs> yes, you're getting you're about to get trapped. <laughs> ah, that's cool. I got coffee. I can, I can only, like, I can only convince these two to, like, I only have so much dirt on them. It's hard to maintain the, like, excuses to keep them <laughs> running uh, running games for us. <laughs> oh man, it's I love I miss DMing. I I had a great game when I was in Calgary, and then two of the people got divorced, and then I moved, and it all went to shit. Mm-hmm. And I was just devastated because it was such a fun game. Mm-hmm. What's it? A- oh, brutal! It's yeah. the fucking worst. Like, and I have one group that we play semi regularly, but like one of us is a parent and lives in Texas. The rest of us have like full time jobs, and it's like ah. God, I miss like just having a regular, regular game. You know, even just a like we're running a four, 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 five, five man one now, which is trying to get five people to sit down at the same time. Oh, there's your mistake so though. Fuck that. Four people is the perfect D and D party. Yeah. Or Pathfinder, whatever. Four is the perfect number. Four? Are we? Five, including me. Is that the? Well, the, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so you're the DM? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's. Oh, I thought, I <laughs> okay, you, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, I thought that. you meant like six, like a five person party. Oh no. And no, then no. a six. Oh no, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah. chaos. It's just yeah. Nothing gets done. Fuck that noise. And the action economy is garbage. What? The action economy is all shit. Like yeah. you can't get like a good monster in there. Sorry, we're no, going real no, deep you're, into you're DM right. talk. No, we have to go deeper. Well, if you want to go back to the radio bit, do you want to do a break from morning radio? Because I have a soundboard here. To work. No, it didn't go. With like fart it, sound? Like yeah. morning zoo? Oh, there we go. oh wow. I've never done a show in my life where I had drops. Here, here's the fart. <laughs> you should see that, doctor. That was- <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kelly's farts sound like. He was very confused. There you go. There's the fart. I, I've never done a show with I've never done a show with music beds and I've never done a show with drops. Music beds? Yeah, where you'll be like, hey, it's what up for that? Where's your radio? It's a song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the other part would just be like, it's like 92.2 the bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah gotcha. <laughs> wait, wait, do that again. <laughs> 92.4 the fart. <laughs> I okay, know, I supposed to before. Should we do it? We can, we can do more takes. We'll just we just do takes all day, you know. <laughs> hey, you're listening to ninety two point five, the wet one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was okay. Shout out to this this guy who is a producer at a radio station in Toronto. He would film himself every time he saw a new gas station, uh, or like he saw a gas station price, and he'd like make it a small town Ontario radio station. Oh, oh, nice. So, so he like walked by. He's like ninety two five Jazz FM Barry's home for soft riffs. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. I wish I could like credit the guy proper, but yeah, like find if you ever look up like small town radio gas prices, it's perfect. It's brilliant. Nice. Um. So <laughs> Kelly's looking at me pointedly. Um. So. We were hoping to do a segment that we haven't tried yet before. It's called Question Jar. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do it. We should grab that jar. We, cool. we don't have a musical cue for Question Jar, but... Wait, no. Yeah, we do. Are you ready? It's a fart. Yeah. It's a fart. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so small. So, so delayed. <laughs> All right. That was the, the best way to do it. All right. Question Jar. So, here, I'll take that big stack out of there. So here's the idea that we had with the question jar. You can hold on to that. Was there's a, there's a series of one person at a time. Okay. Um, there's a series of preset questions in there. Uh, there's I think like eleven questions in there, 
And there are all kinds of things. Cinnamon candy? Probably. Do you keep cinnamon candy in here? I keep a lot of things in jars. It smells like um, spicy Tim Tams. I wanna, it might be. Yeah, smell the question jar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, heart candies. Ooh, yeah. heart spicy heart candies? Candy. Okay, wait. The, the, new, the new segment is called Guess the Smell. Smell my jar. <laughs> That's oh, the that question, does? is what was in this jar beforehand? What was in this jar beforehand? I think it was Cinnamon Hearts. I yeah. think Cinnamon Hearts, I, I yeah. don't remember owning Cinnamon Hearts. So there's, a, there's questions in this jar. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull out as many or as few as you want. If you pull out a question, you have to answer it. But for every question that you do answer, then you can write a new question on here and add it to the jar. The jar will grow over time. Okay, cool. Well, I don't want to read... Someone... I think you, I think happen. another person should pick the question and then ask it. Oh, if only it's somebody here whose job was to orchestrate like games. Here we go. <laughs> hey, my first radio rodeo. Hey, my first radio. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, every time he goes on, hate hey, my first radio. Uh, uh, what is your favorite joke? Oh, you know what? That's actually really easy. Um, Joe Jack Handy. Jack Handy? Is that oh. that's that's a move I taught Pat and did? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, so Jack Handy was this uh, he was this comic that was on SNL for years, um, and his thing was like the one liner, like the one liner joke, like the Mitch Hedberg, mm -hmm. Anthony Jeselnik before those guys were comics, and so Jack Handy had this segment called the Deep Thoughts of Jack Handy that would just play into a commercial. It was amazing, um, and he I don't know if this is one that was from one of his Deep Thoughts. Or if it was just something he was doing in a stand-up set, but it always absolutely killed me. Um, if I ever fall off a really tall tower, I'm going to put my arms and legs to my side really tight like a mannequin. Because then someone's going to reach out and catch me because, hey, free mannequin. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Pretty fucking good. <laughs> it's okay, they're, they're like, and, and they're all in that kind of style, right? There's yeah. um, there's another one. Uh, uh, when I was a little boy, my parents used to leave my siblings and I with our caveman uncle. Then one day he ate one of us. Later we found out he was a bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's like touching on anti joke. It's yeah. it, it's it's very Norm Macdonald before Norm Macdonald. It right? reminds me of uh, there. There used to be this really awesome like underground comedy show in Edmonton called uh, Doctor Jokes. Oh, and... I remember Doctor Jokes. Yeah, you've been there oh, for years ago, like yeah. before I moved. Before I moved away. There you yeah, go. yeah. So there was this one guy there, and like I was less familiar with comedy at the time, so I didn't realize at the time he was kind of just really ripping off Mitch Hedberg's stick. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, well, this dude is so weird. I love it, and he had this joke that I still remember, and he was like. Yeah, I found out my imaginary friend was talking about me behind my back. A real friend wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just a Mitch Hedberg joke, though. That's like, I'm pretty sure that's just a Mitch Hedberg joke. I, I wouldn't put it past him. I don't know. But there you go. You answered the question. Oh, man. Yeah, Jack Handy was great. Or uh, I, I always carry around, carry around two sacks. That way no one will ever ask me to move. Because I can't go, go, hey, I'm sorry, I got two sacks. That's it. That's just, that's it. My hands are full. I got two sacks. I heard I heard a really dumb good one the other day, too. Um, why, why do gnomes giggle when they frolic through a field? Ah, I know this one. Gnomes giggle. Because the grass tickles their balls. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't know. I love I mean, that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's dumb. pretty good. I'm like imagining a bunch of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I just love, I just love barley. <laughs> <laughs> the texture of the barley is the best. I like that your gnome voice is the same as your radio guy voice. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a good one for lots of characters. I mean, I always think of gnomes and I always almost want to go like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm walking here. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Sullivan one. I came from the underdark. Oh, no, look at me. I haven't seen the sun. What, you going to fucking judge? Fuck you. 
Who are you fucking looking at? <laughs> Tall piece of shit. I hope that's your character's voice. <laughs> Man, I don't know if gnomes should sound like that or they should be from Jersey because like that's also very really good. <laughs> Hey, what the fuck? I'm walking here. Hey, look, look down. Why don't you watch your knees? You're gonna hit me in the eye. What's the deal? What do I have to? I have to wear a fucking helmet just to come walk here. Fuck you. Fuck you. You want me to dance like this, huh? You think it's cute? Huh? Or you want me to build you a new crossbow? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Come back when you have money, you yeah. fucking chump. I want to participate <laughs> in this bit so bad, but Josh is losing his mind in the in the show chat here, and. Um, yeah, so I feel like we should put the ball in your court because we are past the one hour mark, which is when we usually pivot to the game. So if you want to get that role playing in, we can switch or you could answer another question or we could we could just jump right back into that dumb bit. I mean, I'm hands I off. Like the bitch, you, <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. But well, one of my favorite DMs, for whatever reason, when he when we cast speak with plants, it's always from Boston. Yeah, nice. and he always nice. loves Tom Brady. <laughs> it's this, it's so dumb it's so immersion breaking don't give a shit it's always funny i i firmly believe that the best way to uh to play role playing is to do it like wrong um weirdly i don't ever get invited back to sessions that would i like you know play with people you know what including no, the fuck, session i did with him no fuck, fuck you there's no way this is my favorite thing about role playing games is that there's there isn't a right way to do it like if, if you want to critical roll it and act out everything and do these intense voices and character things, awesome. If mm -hmm. you want to have an ongoing bit about how you you can't get close to tieflings because they make your bits burn because you're a secretly a demon baby, you go nuts too. Who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. It's a fucking game. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Yeah. Let me tell you, okay. when we were putting this show together and we got a lot of like advice or we got input specifically from kind of a focus group of like really like tabletop community people um there are according to them there are ways you absolutely have to do role playing like people are like you're gonna role play for an hour that's not long enough that is like the biggest thing what? No, fuck repeatedly. It, look at look at <laughs> look at look at um did you ever watch Harmon town when it was running I never heard oh, of it. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. Hard. Okay. Thank you. So, like, in hard... no way have I ripped off any ideas from that. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to say, I was like, wait a second. I know this format. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Motherfucker. I've, I've been had. <laughs> like, there, there was none of those stories made sense. No. And they're, they're like just super condensed, like, and, they're like, like 20 yeah, minutes. and I still, and I still can't put a shambling mound onto a battle map without oh, calling it a Gary yeah. shambling. Yeah. Like, I can't. I love shambling, man. <laughs> So good. Oh, such a, he's such a dick. I love Chandler. Oh <laughs> man, great! If you've never seen Harmontown, none of this makes sense. Mm. <laughs> I've yeah, uh, I mean, episodes that Kelly has force fed me in order yeah. to show me what he uh, had in mind for the show. But no, this is dope. This is awesome. Oh, but we have a soundboard, you know. Why is that one not going? I really wanted there to be another fart. The little, the little one. <laughs> the little, the little one. <laughs> <laughs> A little <laughs> one, like <laughs> you know, Matt Mercer, these sound effects just make them really gross yeah, and wet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate that. oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we do? Are we doing the mouth noises thing again? Oh yeah, we did this before. Yeah, we've done this. Oh like, no, I, we're back into the same bit. Fuck. I know, I know. Yeah. Damn it. I'm really trying to do any of these bits. We should really pivot. <laughs> you got to be more aggressive. This is your game. Oh, you want? Oh yeah. Let's, sure, let's do it. It seems like we we're kind of doing it already. Well, I mean, we've already started. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm gonna get my phone because that's yeah. where I had like the parts of my character sheet because I don't. I you can was... you can write on a physical one if you want. Can I? Oh, that'd yeah, be a dream. I have mine. That's Skeeter. And while we're handing this out, uh, Nicole is going to do a radio style break. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening to our show here on 92 Toad Father FM. Hey, thank you for tuning in to CKUA, where we play all kinds of different music you haven't been hearing all day, and it's extremely good. CKUA, the radio station that all other radio stations should aspire to be. You need more mouth. You need more like mouth sound. Like, yeah, you gotta get a little. Not quite NPR levels, but like, um, just dry out um, your mouth and get like. Welcome to um, Alberta today on CKUA Radio. I'm here, 
Uh, really excited to bring you a brand new record from uh, from a uh, from a, from a creator from a drum heller. You don't uh, you don't see him very often because he's often out um, plowing fields in his uh, rural background. He uh, likes to have the spirit of rural life into his music, and uh, here he is today. Um, yeah, the whole idea was for <laughs> us to do bits while you fill out your character oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, got, yeah. I got distracted. Actually, fun fact, it was in high school, our high school Christmas concert, because uh, I was in choir and band, because, uh, oh boy, very cool. Um, one was called Christmas on the Radio, and we had to, like, this whole setup was, like, you would sing, the choir would sing a song, and then, like, someone dropped down and be like, hey, it's this person on this radio station, here's the next Christmas song. And I had to do one where I was, uh, where I was CKUA, uh, and I'd be like, hey, and here's a Christmas on the Snow on ckua radio uh and they actually got a person who i now work with to come to be like oh yeah i'm a real person from the radio doing this christmas concert here's this radio station and uh i work with her now and it's very funny oh cool that's um, a good story i just can't encourage it you, you gotta you gotta no, fill it okay, i'll fill it here. here i'll put more <laughs> put more dice down i can go mute your mic if that'll help all jokes aside i uh live for the mid-morning mojo with bubba He's my favorite. I love the music he plays. I love his voice. Just as like the perfect amount of like soothing for the morning. It's like whew, gets me, gets me good. I was, uh, I was reading about like way back when Sonic was a new station and they were like out of a trailer in Niskew. And uh, at one point, one of their um, one of the DJs at the time was bored, and they're like, "I'm going to play our music library in alphabetical order." And I'm just like that. That could be what radio is. <laughs> Spoiler alert: um, When you put that kind of stuff to ratings, it always goes badly. Well, people gotta have better taste. That's the thing. Yeah, they really people could. should stop Absolutely. enjoying. Like, there are people who are like, oh yeah, I listen to one station all day. Eight hours straight at work, and I'm like, How? he's full. No, he's full of shit. You should absolutely do that, and only on one radio station. <laughs> I, I work for. Um, please help me feed my dog. See, if you wanted that bit to work, you should have brought your dog. It would have been more convincing. Oh man, I could have held her up, and she would look all awkward and gangly. Ah, my dog's the best. She's great. This is going to be our new grassroots campaign: is to get people <laughs> to call into Chuck ninety two five and like just exclusively request like the back catalog from artists. Uh, we actually were running a contest right now. We're like naming the radio station after someone. I, I did hear that. I did listen today because I do my research and. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh man, maybe he can rig this contest for me. Uh, so we we had one person call in that they only wanted to hear Men at Work. And I was like, I've never heard someone whose favorite band is Men at Work. And I really appreciate this weird, weird, weird flex. And it was great. It was super fun. We added like 10 new Men at Work songs that we never play. It was great. It was a fun day. How do I enter this contest? Well, check it out at live.com. Just go register. Get yourself all set up and good to go. I literally have your website still open. Hey, there's you. Hey, it's me. I, that was me like 40 pounds ago. <laughs> Holy fuck. Ooh. I got really here. Actually here while I'm filling this out, quick side story. Cause I know I've made like a couple jokes of like about my weight. Um, you which, know what? Let's just put all make... your stats at minus one and then it's ready. Cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, hang on. I'm going to make, no, no, no. Cause a couple of these will be good at. Okay. There's no fourth stat unless we're adding it. Ask, asking it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to make so I got four Riveting points. Content. I got four points, so I'm going to do yeah. um three of them into here. So let me make you a two. Do you want to know what we're good at or a mystery? No, no, fuck that. Who cares? Okay, three will go there, play. and then one will go here because I have little hands. You can also drop one lower if you want. I did that. Is it? Okay. If you want, you want to be bad at something. All right, I got plus one to body. And plus two to my psyche, and minus two to my understanding. Hands, hands. Um, oh yeah. So weight thing. Um, so like I used to weigh like 280, 290 pounds, um, and then I went on this like crazy, really unhealthy fitness thing, where I lost like eighty in the span of six months, and everyone was like, "Wow, good for you! Look at how good you are working out, being awesome!" And I'm like. I starve myself and I only work out and get my calories from liquor. 
Um, and then I got sober and started to eat my feelings instead of drinking them. Mm. Then the pandemic happened. It was just like, bloop, 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 bloop. Mm. um, and that's okay. Cause bodies change and humans change. And I'm not going to be shooting myself. Cause I do that a lot. Um, have you considered channeling those feelings into atrocious bits and detached irony? <sighs> you know, I like broadcast for a living, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made a joke today about the Liberty Bell and how I learned it from National Treasure too. Mm -hmm. It's not, we're not really breaking content here. Is your character sheet full? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Here, here, GM. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. well, no, you're good. You don't need to do oh, the you're bottom. You're good, man. That's all. That's cool. all we need. Dope. Let's go. Sweet. Uh, can I have two of those dice? Sure. Which fence? I mean, these things. I'll have oh. your pretty dice if you want. I don't know. I mean, if, here actually, one hundred percent. Actually, no. Give me some D12 so I have better rolls. Actually, just look at this D20, though. These dice are fucking beautiful. Oh, that's fancy. Nice. Uh, pretty dice, folks. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Where'd you get Oh, them? I'm a dice. I'm such a bad dice goblin. I'm brutal. It's... I just have, like, piles of dice scattered around my condo. It's it's bad. In my pockets. My dressers. Uh, uh, do I just do what we did last time? Just introduce all the characters, and then we'll... Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we'll you do start it. with yours here? Yeah, tell us about yourself. Uh, 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 yeah, the name, is, the name here is uh, Squiggles. I'm, uh, nice. I'm a chinchilla. Oh, nice. I'm a nice, uh, <laughs> little, a little fuzzy kind of guy. I uh, ooh, I got picked up one day by a six-year-old. Her name was Teresa. Sticky hands. Sticky, <laughs> sticky hands. <laughs> she tried to take me home. And I said, no, Teresa. And uh, I broke out of my cage. And I've wandered feral in this pet store for days or weeks. I don't know how long chinchillas live. There's a flaw in this character backstory. <laughs> well, this is great because we have a chinchilla. And you can have all kinds of conversations with him. Oh, fuck yeah. I uh, love I love no. my own chinchillas. Uh, chinchillas. Maybe you're even from the same place. In, oh, uh, no. Do I need... in Latin America. Oh, no. Is this getting into an offensive accent? Do I got to stop being like weirdly, ambiguously Southern? <laughs> Step up from <laughs> Sweepy Pete. You know sure. what's even farther south than Southern? Mexico. Oh, hola. Sorry, now I'm derailing. <laughs> hola, motherfuckers. <laughs> Murder it is. Um, oh yeah, my special talent. I'm a chinchilla. I got tiny hands, like like little raccoons. Nice. Nailed it. And also, I'm soft. <laughs> Speaking of addiction, want to pass me that sugar over there? <laughs> awesome. Well, good to meet you, Squiggles. Um, and uh, Kelly, tell us about your character. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to blow through this so we can get to the game. Um, I'm Skeeter. I'm a ferret. I am long. I was adopted and returned to the store because I suck. My unique talent is biting. Let's go. Right well, you smell horrific. Just that sounded like you know when you you know when like you're in like when you're like five years old and your teacher's like you have to write five sentences about yourself. I kind of felt like get had that kind of vibe. I am Skeeter. I am long. Hey. I went to Vancouver for holiday. We saw fish <laughs> and whale. You're a burnt ferret. Hey Nicole. Um, okay, my Josh will come over and he will beat all of us with a tire iron. Okay, just live that far away. The goal, go. Um, my character is Pear Akito. Um, he is a fr half French, half Japanese um, parakeet or parrot. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've uh, oh right, my special talent is I can translate from human into animal. Yes, and it's canon that she can read human as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll tell you briefly about what we've been up to here, the pet cetera. Um, uh, uh, the group was approached by a frog that lives in the walls of the pet cetera named the Toad Father. Um, he uh, tasked a uh, parakeeto, Skeeter, and uh, I forget the cat's name, but a cat, and a team of five peats to find a uh, way outside of the pet cetera. That includes Sleazy Pete, the, the ferret that is now dead. Uh, <laughs> Squeaky Pete, the mouse, Sleepy Pete, the bat, and Sweepy Pete, the chinchilla, who has gone missing. Um, so they found a way into I the vents. I saw, I saw a chinchilla when I walked in here. He was passed out in the corner. 
<laughs> How stereotypical of yeah, yeah. Why don't he have a Mexican flag painted on him? I mean, I'm a chinchilla. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Why don't he have a luchador mask? <laughs> I was born in North Carolina. I don't know any of the, any of this stuff. And uh, they made it into the vents, and they kind of uh, found a potential way to escape the pet cetera, uh, where they were confronted by good old Sleazy Pete the Weasel, who kind of told them that maybe their quest was not all that it was all cracked up to be, and maybe they were being lied to by the Toad Father. So they returned back to the Toad Father, where they learned that the Toad Father had uh, uh, ongoing nefarious plans to send all sorts of Pete's from the pet cetera to the slaughter of the outside world. To improve his odds of being adopted. Uh, what did they? What else did you guys do? You did some great shit last time. Um, first, you guys used the zeitgeist of what it meant to be French to convert a hench rat um, to the good side. Uh, Turtle Bill's uh, insanely overpowered abilities to freeze the Toad Father, and uh, Squeaky Pete hurled uh, Turtle Bill and shattered the Toad Father into a million pieces. Um, yeah, and. Uh, that's, that's where we are. So, at this, Perfect. At this very moment, the game. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the question jar. <laughs> that's right. We're doing the question jar here on 98 for the uh, articulating butt. <laughs> You're on a with Geeter and Squiggles in the morning, and we're here to. <laughs> We got right. the tiny hands, we got the sharp teeth, and boy, are you gonna be excited to find out what we can do with them. Tiny, heart, tiny hands, a big heart. That's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, fuck this game. We're doing this now. Um, okay, yeah. So. You guys walk in, you just see this weird chinchilla like sitting in the corner, just like licking the side of a frozen chunk of toad. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you guys, yeah, you notice the chinchilla, and you also see uh, uh, behind the chinchilla is a uh, turtle bill he's like encased in like a like psychic energy crystal and he's just like levitating in the middle of the crystal i didn't do that and uh <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, telepathically reaches out to all of you and he says uh what was uh i must now slumber for 100 years friends <laughs> for my vital turtle energies remember all that i taught you about the power of love it is your greatest and most powerful asset. And if that fails you, use your unbelievable, awesome turtle powers to, to squash Heroes those who oppose show. you. Turtle power? Sorry. Turtle power. I didn't want to step on you. And he, he coined it. Uh, escape this place, but I encourage you to use the power of love. Farewell, friends. Remember, the Toad Father used evil and murder to try and get adopted to no avail. And then he just like, twing, he just like freezes himself in this cosmic turtle matrix. Uh, uh, I I just uh, oh, 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 what's my voice again? Uh, I'll give you a minute to think about it. Uh, so now that the uh, the the adventure is clearly over and there's no real like things that are in need of doing, I go over and turn the radio on. <laughs> Oh wow, this is my favorite. Um, you know why I think this is my new character voice. I can't. So yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. keep doing this. Hi, my name is Squiggles. I think there is something funny in this toad. <laughs> oh. And uh, at that moment, uh, the Squiggles, rat... no, your sobriety. That toad is full of uh, five Neo DMT. Uh, <laughs> <You're> gonna... <laughs> oh no, I was six days left to one thousand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, you're you immediately get... I feel like I don't canonically know you. Also, I, I, just... I just assumed you were sober. You got that vibe. You look healthy. You got a glow. How are you doing? I'm 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 Skeeter, the 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 the, the chinchilla. No, no, wait. I'm not chinchilla. I'm a ferret. Sorry, it's been a long day. I can tell. Day. Oh boy, I'll be honest. I was just kind of wandering around. And I saw this weird, like, floating gem guy, <laughs> and then there was a sound of freezing rays. I don't quite understand what's happening. Who is speaking French? I don't understand. <laughs> The Teresa, the girl that adopted me, she also spoke French. I didn't understand. You, I think, you've been adopted? I think she, yeah, that broke my way out. Fuck being adopted. If you try it, it's terrible. Is it? Yeah, it's really fucking. Why do you think I'm here licking a fucking toad? <laughs> but would you be licking a toad if you were adopted? Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, well, no, like not every adoption is a good one. I mean, sure, you go out into the world, but at what cost? The cost of freedom. Well, freedom isn't free. The cost of being it. held <laughs> and being <laughs> moved around like this and made to dance. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ferrets are. I always thought ferrets are weird. Hey, but you bird. Why do you want to be free? I uh, throughout my life, I've learned that all humans are garbage, and uh, I have nothing more that I want to do with them. Do they not clip your wings? I don't know. Can you still fly? Yes, uh, that's actually a very hurtful stereotype that we all have our wings clipped, but uh, let it pass this time. I don't know, it's not a stereotype. I think my owners were just pieces of shit. <laughs> it's entirely possible. Says squeaky beep. <laughs> I don't know, but, if, but we, want, we want to get out of here, right? Like Freedom, real, true freedom. I don't know, my freedom, I think, comes from art. I think I want to create art. I don't know how. Okay, well, you have fun with that. We're going to try to get back out of here. It was nice meeting you. Bye. Uh, oh, fuck. This, my toad's wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mellow. No. <laughs> my vibe. Oh, shit. Well, oh, man. That hide disappeared quick. All right, guys. Let's get the fuck <laughs> out of here. I mean, we don't have to really get adopted. We could get adopted and betray our masters. I don't know. We can find we we we, we, can, we can find some island paradise. We can find some island paradise and and, and fill it with uh, with ferret hookers. It'll be great. We're gonna go there and we're gonna we're gonna be free. Okay, we're gonna go to Tahiti. <laughs> do, you have go, a, do you have a plan? Go to Tahiti. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a plan. You gotta trust the plan. Come on. All right, let's hear it, Skeeter. <laughs> okay, so have a little faith, okay? <laughs> How do I get to Tahiti? How have a little faith, Tahiti? Squiggles. Okay, so we're gonna go. Here's the plan. Unless, unless, unless the one of these guys had some sort of a plan set for us, you know, in a sort of an expository way. Wait, what? Oh, okay, where, the plan is we're gonna smash through the window That's because the vents, if I recall correctly, were a trap. Is that right? I look at the uh, other animals who know what the GM knows. Oh yeah, and, and have uh, the GM notes in front of them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Streaky Pete, uh, Sweepy Pete, Sleepy Pete, and Squeaky Pete all simultaneously nod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna so walk. Sleepy Pete was there. Uh, yeah, he poked his head out of the vent and just nodded, and then he just ran. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> walk out. I'm gonna gather, gather some more frozen toad chunks. I'm gonna put them in my like chinchilla gut. Yeah, nice. And, like fold it out, pop it in, hide them up for inventory. Hide them up for later. That'll be good for. So you're, you're peeling later. back some skin, is what you're saying. Call back. <laughs> no, callbacks are gauche. I was just frozen, I'm threading uh, a beautifully woven narrative chunks through itself. Cool. Okay. Well. Wait, how many did I get? I feel like that was a this is a real pro, plan. folks. He has used the inventory it. space on his character sheet. Wow. This guy knows what he's doing. Right. So, break the window? Is that the plan? Yeah, break the window. Break the window. What do we got? Uh, I, I examined my surroundings. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, you're like in the Toad Father's lair. Um, he's got like a little desk there with a little swinging lamp there. There could be something in the desk. Uh, but you're basically... Anything that would be in between the walls of et cetera is open for your use. Uh, insulation. Um, oh. Stray nails. Okay. Uh, okay. I, <laughs> I want to go looking down the aisles. No, no, Nicole, just talk over me. Just do it. Okay. I'm, I'm go doing it. I have an idea. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to... I'd like to go back to my cage. I'd like to sharpen my beak on the little beak thing. Like, you know, like people have like little toys in their bird cages that they can sharpen their beaks on and like chew on. Something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you do like cool. a little training montage. I'm gonna go. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go along with? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a uh, parakeeto. Hey, hey, a parakeeto. Sorry, that I've come down again. I have. Uh, here, can I? Can I? Can I try something here? Hang on. I'm gonna go grab like a little rock or a stone from somewhere. Like here, sharpen your beak on that, and I'll right. work it together. We're using like a wet stone. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Streaky Pete, like he's like, oh yeah. Uh, no, Streaky Pete doesn't have a voice, but his antennas just kind of. Garble, and he like goes over and he's like saucing onto the rock for you to add like the, the wetness. What is he again? He's a snail. Oh <laughs> shit! Okay, yeah. yeah, good job, Slippy Pete. <laughs> good, good job, buddy. His antenna move in approval. Oh yeah, you do it. So like, we're gonna get the beak real sharp, yeah. You're real, real, real intense. Um, I'm wondering, windows are tough. Uh, Teresa kept me in a little cage, a little plastic one. Um. And about what what animals in here could we could we use? Hey, who's your least favorite animal, Parakeeto? <laughs> Who in here's a piece of shit? 
I mean, I have to go with Skeeter. He did uh, murder someone in our first episode, so. All right, what about worse than with Skeeter? Skeeter, who's your least favorite animal here? Well, you know, I thought I had an idea of that, and all of a sudden I've just been fucking stabbed in the back with Parakeeto here. So my, <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite animal is now Parakeeto, so I guess this leaves it as kind of a stalemate. Maybe we should ask Sweetie Pete who is least favorite animal. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense that he doesn't have a, fa a least favorite animal because he just kills everyone he doesn't like, so... And uh, Sleepy Pete looks at you and he's like, you know Sleepy Pete loved everyone. He didn't have a mean bone in his body. In wait, wait, in I have an idea. I have an idea. Oh. You guys. <laughs> the, uh, oh, shit. What, what was Breezy's character's name? The the who's, one who's now in... Turtle Kansas, Bill. Like, Turtle Bill. Turtle Bill. Is Turtle Bill like in a like a, like a physically frozen form? Yeah, he's like in a... Like a like a weird like uh like from starcraft 2 pylon like floating oh, yeah. crystal matrix oh, thing. guys guys turtle bill can we is he, he's all hardened now can we smash him through the window i'm sure uh, he won't mind uh using one of those human devices um I think trebuchet. Called, uh... the dog tennis ball throwers <laughs> yes the trebuchet it's a brand name of dog tennis ball throwers <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, uh, i don't and it's, it's actually I don't, spelled trebuchet i don't speak communist <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we can make like a, a weird <laughs> catapult system out of communist technology. Yeah, yeah, how about uh, a yeah, you understand a uh, Oh, but good, good communist trebuchet. Okay, yeah, that's a oh, catapult. Monager. Pull. Um, Any kind of siege weapon, really. It just has to launch. A, oh wait, a no, I'm smart. Oh, I should be smart. Okay, no, a ballista. I'm... You know a ballista. Uh, no, no, no. I am stupid. It's not okay. analogous to a dog tennis ball launcher, but it is a siege weapon. You know what? I think what we do is we take the, you know, the the, the flippy leashes with the with the retractables. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah take, we'll take those and we'll like kind of we'll get the leash real long and then we'll click the button that pulls it in and then we can fling it using, yeah. I don't know, a Faraday cage or something. That's not what that does. That's not what that does at all. <laughs> a ferret a cage? Ferret, <laughs> ferret, ferret, ferret day cage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, yeah, we could put. Oh, no, wait, we're going to use. They're, they're, they're of higher quality than a ferret bee cage. Hang on. I got to go find a rough wear harness. The best kind of harness we can find. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna God. just pull it over nice. and wrap it around Turtle Bill. All right, right on. Yeah, you do that. Okay. No problem. Good try to do that. Do okay, that. I'm gonna go look for a leash. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. You guys like leave. In I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm going to go. Quickly. I'm going to take my freshly sharpened beak and try to scratch some indents into the door, so that it is easier to shatter. Oh, you're. Oh, you're gonna like. Uh... Like a crystal cutter, like a, yeah, like exactly. A yeah, nice. Uh, you should roll body for that. That makes sense. Do that. I got oh, I got a four. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you um, I, I don't know, like it might, you just uh write in in the the window. Like some slanderous things in French about humans. And it's, uh, it, it did not add to the fragility of the, the window. So sorry. Oh. Man, Parakito, that's really offensive. Yeah, that's really fucked. I don't know. It's not good to be people's mothers into things. Yeah. Well, why why do you have the letter N so many times? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's too this is a, whoa. Yes, that's pretty spicy, Parakito. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. if spicy is even the right word for that. I'm, hang on, we'll just fix it. We'll just change that to a W and we're good. Oh, shit, we made it worse. <laughs> Fuck. Well, what do we do now? Uh, I don't know. I, okay, or we'll take the take the, 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 the tribute shit. Trebuchet. Hang, hang on, hang on. I'm not. The I'm tray not, bucket. I'm not high enough for this, guys. I'm not going to start licking some toad. Yeah, let's, uh, take one toad out. Hold on, one toad. Hey, don't bull guard that toad. Give me, give me a little bit. Yeah, get skiers. Oh, my God. Well, I want one too. Oh, fuck. Guys, I only came with five. Guys, I haven't, I haven't done Toad before. Does, does it only make your voice higher? Or does it something do something else? I just want to touch everyone right now. Oh, my God. That sounds like a great time. Oh, wow. Okay. I feel, I feel like right, taking it now. Here you go. You smell really strong. Take your toad. Oh, oh right. my God. Oh, yeah, oh God. Right, you want to smell right. something amazing? Right. Oh, you right. should smell that thing. There, there's give that. Me. There's that. All right, here all right. we go. We've all gone to Shambhala. All right. <laughs> and then you finally hear for the first time Streaky Pete's voice. What the fuck? What the fuck? This is this is I I yeah. can speak. I can yeah. speak. Like speaking's really cool. On his... Speaking's really cool, man. We love it. Amazing. I want to take this opportunity to tell all of you that I love you so much. 
and you always speak so highly of me. Oh, I just really appreciate that. Well, buddy, here, why don't you climb on top of this big purple guy that we have wrapped in a harness? Let's look up here. Let's go lift you up. Oh, yes, Turtle Bill. He yeah. was excellent. Hang on to your Turtle Bill, buddy. All right. So, okay, so we're going to we're gonna wrap, we're going to throw this guy right for momentum. Oh, man, there's uh, so much going on right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I've got to overwhelm. I think I just need to, like, lay down with some, like, like LED lights and just, like, listen to some music for a bit. Oh, boy. I, oh, God. I can see sound. The only thing they play in this crap store is Kelly Clarkson. That's, 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 that's fine. I'm way too high. I'm way too high. I just need to like, get some Whatever air. Oh, kill why, you can, make... why, why can't I breathe? Does my pulse seem like it's really high? Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, buddy. Here we go. Okay. Uh, you see if we everyone can... roll uh, uh, slingshot turtle Understanding bill. for how well this uh, tip is going. <laughs> two did work one. Uh, two, three, three. Uh, I got a 14 ah. minus two, which is 12. Oh wow! Oh my god! Uh, Seven, four, two, nine. Nine. A twelve and nine. In it. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the amazingly Skeeter just pulled his weight so he hardcore, <laughs> um, and everything that he was responsible for works perfectly. Uh, Squiggles, you. I think uh, the toad gave me superpowers. Give me some more of that. I only got four, I only got two left. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. There's no time. Let's just let's just go dance. I, 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 I don't know how to act around you people anymore. <laughs> I was just having a good time wandering around, being a little chinchilla boy, and now I'm just oh god damn it! There I'm goes, like, manic. I just down. like I I go and I is the uh, have we loaded the Toad Father? In the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I press the button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, like Kareen's Turtle Bill. Man, I really hope we don't kill that I guy. I gave you a beautiful Amazing. little tray there. Roll of a weird shirt. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you're just like, fuck it, we're going, we'll do it live. And you like cut the, the leash, and like Turtle Bill is like hurtled. At, at everything Turtle Bill did was impressive. And he just shoots out of the front window at an impressive speed, shattering the window completely as you are exposed to the outside world. My God. It's worse than I remember. But unfortunately... God, it's so fucking cold. Why did we do this in February? Jesus Christ. Do you, do you need a jacket? A little bit. All right, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go find, a, find a, a series of dog poop bags. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to yeah. wrap them. I'm just wrap them. <laughs> just wrap so them. Flattering and and these are going to keep me warmer than my literal fur coat I'm already wearing? <laughs> Look, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I don't really know where we're going with this one. I'm, I'm not all the way down. <laughs> That's okay. Just, just, just like check some car. You know, I'll help you. And I slap him in the face. Whoa! So we're, uh, oh, gee, oh, oh boy. Does that help? Does that help? You need the other one? You need the other one? I slap again. I don't, yeah. I don't wait for a response. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Hi. Oh, yeah. Wait. All right. I, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, I, I start. Uh, can, I, can, can I reach the window that we shattered? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You actually look out the window and like you see like. <laughs> Uh, basically, in the horizon, like the sun is starting to rise in the distance, and uh, just because you guys have spent so many so much time here, you realize that this is the time where the shop owner would be coming in. And you, as you poke your head out the window, you can see like a car and two lights like come and blare up into the front window as the uh, the pet shop owner kind of like steps out of his, out of his vehicle. Honestly, like, friends, I think we cap him. <laughs> I I just see the like this finely open window for the first time in my entire like existence in this pet store and i'm so hyper fixated i have like just no regard for the consequences or my own safety and i just charge for no, that window don't, don't do it don't with do all it. of the oh, confidence of that dude who run who ran into the burning man fire uh and i <laughs> i just go i do not care what happens? I would nothing will stop me from jumping out I'm that window. I'm gonna try to grab him. I don't want to let him go. All right, both of you, roll body. Yeah. Are you trying to grab me? Uh oh, that's not very good at all. Um, if I rolled a, a a natural one, do I add my two to it? You got two ones, snake eyes. You oh. really think I'm still? Yeah, you really still think I'm using two d sixes, do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I rolled two ones. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, like... Uh, seven. Uh, yeah, seven. Oh, nice. Yeah, so... Um, uh, I should have just said yes. I shouldn't have explained it. Nah, it's weirder now. Now it's up. Now we're all uncomfortable. Yeah. Boo. Uh, 
so Skeeter does that thing where he like gets ready to jump, and you know those like cat videos where like the cat like jumps and then like back legs fall out, and he just like falls immediately. And uh, Skeeter just kind of flops down on the ground as uh, Squiggles just <laughs> pulls him into his inventory. <laughs> Get uh, off me, man! You're fucking caught, man! Get up! What the hell are you doing? Par- you're, you're, parakeeto! You're, you're harshing my vibe, man! Parakeeto, grab him! And I'm gonna try to fling him up toward the parakeeto. <laughs> in that Sorry, moment, you hear the, the, the shopkeep kind of like doing his like, doo, doo, doo. he's just whistling as he's jingling his keys, walking up to the front door. Sorry, am I, am I trying to grab Skeeter or am I trying to grab the shop owner? I mean, open to interpretation. I, I oh. just threw a speeder at you, but oh, honestly, okay. like, yeah, I look, I look over to you, and I pick up a piece of glass. And I just do this. And I point at the owner. <laughs> Try and murder the owner. Oh god, we're we gonna really kill a man! Oh god. You haven't seen the things I've seen. Uh, you don't good. know the horrors humans can commit. I'm, I'm beginning to really believe that. Uh, <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. And uh, all the people kind of like look at each other and not, they're not sure about the plan. Uh, but roll. Uh, I, can't, I, 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 I can't be held responsible. I already killed a man. I got priors and I dart for the window again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab him one more time. Okay, yeah. Both grab body, body. Roll body. Okay, oh, now shit. I got a 16. Uh, oh, eight, Six. nine. No. What, what is 16? 14 plus two. Really? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, hot butter. Just be trying to be grabbed by hot hands. You just, you just hot like, butter by hot, hot hands. hands. I just, just chinchillas do have historically very hot hands. Listen, very is, hot head, buttery fingers. Yeah. Really. I mean, what is easier to hold, cold butter or hot butter? I I I can't I can't believe it's not butter is my go-to. Okay. <laughs> I mean I, I think can. it makes perfect sense. If your hands are hot, they will melt the butter, thus making it hotter butter, and the hot butter in general will slip through your hands faster. So I escape you like hot butter through hot hands. <laughs> That's right. He knows what he's doing. The man's, a pro- man's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> and you just slip out of uh, Squiggle's inventory as you like dart towards the uh, the door, and the shopkeep can like he's like finally just he's like oh. Oh my win- my win- my window! Oh no no he's not Count Dracula. No he is. <laughs> my window! Oh no! no, 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 no I heard an window. Indian accent. I think this guy is uh, from Punjab. No no he's, uh-huh. he's definitely a vampire. Okay well you <laughs> you keep doing your vampire and is we'll. That, uh... Is that canon? Is the shopkeeper yeah. vampire? Uh, yeah we've never actually seen him. So, he's yeah, a vampire he from up, Punjab. He comes up and he like finally is like out of the blare of the the, the the car lights and he's wearing like a like huge brim like collared like trench coat wait, thing. Wait, in in the shadows of the mirror of the glass, can we see his reflection? Ooh, do <laughs> uh do a understanding check. Minus two. Uh four. Yeah, it could be a tree, but it also could be him. You never know. <laughs> I think we got a cool vampire. I think we have to do you it. You saw you thought you saw his reflection no, and so no, you it was a tree. we have to kill it was a tree I saw. Look at it, it's all it's February, it's brown. <laughs> Like, oh boy. Whoops. You're very smart for a man with four understandings. <laughs> like, wow. Like, I, don't, I don't I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I think it's go get him, boys. You're looking at me, but I'm already out the window, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, no. He uh so you like you like shoot through the window and like without even looking at you, he just like <sighs> catches you like a fastball and he's like, Bill, 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 it's, if it isn't skeeter. <laughs> I'm gonna break myself <laughs> Cute as possible. I don't get to roll to like dodge out of his hand. Uh, yeah, sure, you can do that. Why not? The body roll. Yeah, I got a ten plus two. <laughs> oh, slippery like hot butter, and <laughs> my hands are like hot hands. <laughs> um, you can escape if you want. You can leave your friends now. Uh, yeah, I split the. I told you, I just you keep just running, kept cutting your losses and running. Yeah, <laughs> get out of your Transylvanian freak, and I just keep just charging. I just charge straight. <laughs> You're good. you're gone. You Check. escaped at the pet store. <laughs> you have you have won. You the have game. won the game. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go bed. <laughs> is that a user wins? No, no, this is per user basis. <laughs> He's like, Bill, what is fun, Barrett, when I have so many to play with? And he like crawls through the window, just like 
I'm gonna. And you know, he sees all of the Pete's and you guys. I'm gonna like, make myself look as cute as possible, and I'm gonna try to tuck a piece of glass into my little, into my little pouch. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got, you got a shiv. I think okay. you had time to do that. Okay, all right. Yeah. I don't look cute as shit. I'm super yeah. cute. Cute as fuck. <laughs> big eyes. Big eyes. <laughs> Anime eyes. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, and he's like, he's looking at all of you. He's like, very, 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 very unacceptable. You are out of your cages. And Parakito, <laughs> I expected much more from you. Um, and he so, like goes over to pet you, Parakito. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dodge the pet a little bit, but I'm gonna fly up so that I can look him in the eye. I'm gonna land on it. I'm gonna try and land on the cash register so I can look him directly in the eye. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna like, say, Charles, we've known each other for a long time, and of course, my friend. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know I know that you value our friendship and I, I know that you are planning on adopting me but I think you know that when you love something you must set it free and so I'm asking well, you to give me my not freedom not in my country but <laughs> what do you want sorry I cut you off what do you want to ask me I <laughs> oh god I lost the accent it's gone it's gone <laughs> <laughs> okay. not and, I, and I, so I, 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 I st stop and I take a deep breath and I go, and I, and I drop the accent because I've been faking it my whole life to appear more French. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, <laughs> and I say, <laughs> Charles, you need to let me go. And I look straight into his soul and I say, you need to let us all go. What the fuck? You're not even friend. <laughs> what is this bullshit? No, I'm I am I am heartbroken, Paragito. You've lied to me for all these years, and and I I'm running a business. I cannot just let all of my animals leave. But he stares into your eye, and you roll psyche. That's just, that's just mind. I got an eight. Okay, Perakito. How about this? We uh, we smoke one more cigarette together and we say our farewells. But I cannot let th these other animals go. I will let you go out of respect of our pr previous smoking relationship that we had with one one another. <laughs> previous smoking <laughs> relationship. <laughs> but the, I... the others I cannot go. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm cool. Let's let's okay, do this. Fuck yeah. Yeah, he's like a few cigarettes and just like lights you on, sticks it in your beak, and you like you smoke, and just in the in the way that you have always have, you both do it in one big hall, <laughs> just like <laughs> while, this, like, while this is happening, uh, uh, Squiggles is opening up his little tum tum. Oh yeah, and he's gonna take the last piece of frog. <laughs> All right, kids. Let's co let's commit some murder. <laughs> I'm gonna crawl up. Let's I feel like I'm making myself seem like a murder hobo in the rest of my games. I really like intricate role play. I'm making about the feelings. Anyway, I'm gonna crawl up and I'm gonna stab this motherfucker in the throat. All right, roll body. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! Seven. Hey, that yeah, that's good. All right, and uh, so he doesn't even notice you because he's just staring lovingly into Parakito's eyes. <laughs> and you say see their it, final farewell. You see this like little chinchilla like start to crawl up, and its <laughs> eyes are fucking. You know how chinchilla eyes are like a little like they stick out a little bit. These ones are sticking out a little too far <laughs> to the point where you're almost like the point where it's like, oh fuck, is that cherry eye? I yeah. should probably take it to the vet. Is it like one of those toys where you squeeze it and its eyes go? Like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you see, you see that crawling over with the little tiny hand, like reaching up, and a little shoe. Who's free now, bitch? What? And you, you impale the the pet owner, the pet store <laughs> owner, into the neck. He's like, ah! He's like <laughs> squirting blood. He's like, ah, Berkito, no, I loved you. You betrayed me. For the second. <laughs> More! We want more! <laughs> Roll Psyche! Really quick! Oh no! Uh, <laughs> okay. Wait, no, that's my plus two. So... Seven again? Seven again. Yeah, right on. And, and as you, you you scream, more, more, and you're like covered in blood, 
the all the other pizza are like more and they like they all like grab pieces of the glass and they all start stabbing him in like the ankles and skin. He's like, ah, ah, no, Paraquito. Trying to kill me is one thing, but lying to me about being French is another. And he 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 delivers a swift backhand on Paraquito. And he uh, sends, you, sends you flying across the room. He feels betrayed. Oh, and he okay. starts to kick off the snails and mice that are stabbing his feet as uh he's losing more and more blood, but he like grabs you. Oh no! And he does squeeze you, oh, and your eyes just like do, do it, do it, do it! You oh, fucking, no, oh, close! And he do like it, you fucking coward! He, he you it. can't do it! <laughs> he throws you on the ground. He's like, oh fuck! Oh my god! And I'm just like shrill squeaking. Yeah, yeah. All that's happening. Yeah, no, he, he it seems like he can understand you guys. <laughs> it's like, oh, fucking gross! Uh, I said I wanted to be an artist, and I'd take like I'm a bloody body. <laughs> And I'm gonna start like making body paints, and I'm gonna try to draw a chinchilla on the on the on the sidewalk out front. <laughs> I'm just gonna like flop around to make a little, a little image blood, of myself. Blood chinchilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That totally. I feel like I must look like a fucking psychopath now to these yeah. strangers in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the first uh, person to commit commit like horrible tra tra travesties while on the show, so don't feel self conscious. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyway, I'm gonna turn myself into a paintbrush. Yeah, right on. He's uh, he's like, he's he. You seem to have kind of grossed him out. <laughs> he's just like, Ugh. and uh, he turns <laughs> this his... is better or worse than the ice cream skills. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, uh, and uh, he like he's like uh, he kind of like is stop paying attention to you, and he's directing all his rage towards you, Parakito. Can I can I roll to see how good the chinchilla yeah, blood art is? Definitely. That, is that, yeah, what kind of, yeah, body, because your body is the medium. Hey, shit, that's it's pretty good. really good. It's yeah. really good. And it's even, anatomically correct. Yeah, it's got a huge dong. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just a really, really good chinchilla. But, uh, yeah, you're outside of the pet store, too, so you're, you're, you're free Sweet, as well. Sweet, beautiful freedom! <laughs> oh, no, I'm coming to, son of a bitch! How many, how many frog bits? I'm out of frog. Oh, you're out of frog bits. I'm out of frog. I have to this. go back to the store and get more frogs. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> boy. Fuck me. I'm going to just like, grab a little ice pick and be like, my kingdom for a paintbrush. And they're going to run away. <laughs> and you shovel off. Just, just drenched waddle, in vampire blood. Just waddling away. <laughs> Meanwhile, the pet shop owner is watching, walking straight towards you, Pierakito, with malice and vengeance in his eyes. Oh, like, God. You were going to leave me. Uh, no, uh, that's French. You were going to leave me and turn all of my pets against me? I blame you ex exclusively, Parakito. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck you in particular. <laughs> can I, okay, I'm gonna try and, can I, like, try and fly over his head and out the door and escape? Yeah, you try and do that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I got a 10. Yeah, he's like, he reaches towards you and you're just like, whoop. You fly over his head. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> fuck you, Barakito. And then it's like, as I'm flying out, I'm just going to throw up some fucking, like, with my the tips of my wing feathers, just throw up, like, a double, like, bird flip yeah, off. as like, leaving, like, a purple bird because you yourself are also a bird. <laughs> <laughs> flip him the actual bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he, he's like, oh, the insult to the injury. <laughs> I will never emotionally recover from this. <laughs> and he, like, in his, like, dramatic trench coat, he just kind of, like, slumps over and kicks a piece of glass <laughs> off to the side. And uh, he uh, walks over to the cash register, opens up, turns on the light, and starts to start to make preparations for the beginning of the day. Wait, wait, but he's a vampire, but the sun has now come up over him. Yeah, but he's inside the... Oh, he's he's sure. Ah, fuck, no! I, I, I was no, two my, minutes late on my opening. My special <laughs> resistant glass has been broken. No. <laughs> he's like, as you're flying away, like a cool guy not looking at explosions, he just like... Just <laughs> falls onto the floor. And then the sound of the Ewok, the Ewok celebration plays. dun 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 Wow.
<laughs> that would go places. A lot of violence in this uh, system we designed to not have combat, really. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes violence is the only answer. I mean, I didn't even, I, I just, I got confused and I got scared. Fight or flight, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I chose flight. <laughs> Literally. Sure <did. laughs> I feel great. Like, I won. I won ahead of schedule. Like, I could just take the next show You didn't off. commit murder? Yeah, I didn't kill anyone, so I just ran. Yeah, yeah, not a single weasel was murdered. By What's you. the There's difference between a there, ferret and a weasel, by the way? Um, a ferret is cunning and knows how to escape a pet store, and the weasel gets fucking got when he talks back to the ferret. So <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered that until just now. Yeah, now you know. That's the only difference. Power of knowledge. <laughs> Well, this was fun. Strangers I met in a basement. <laughs> yeah. This is why you should always go to a stranger's basement when they invite you. It always ends in fun. That's always, that's nine time, nine times out of ten, they, it ends in fun. When I go to speak at school assemblies, that's what I tell children. <laughs> it's just, it, it's so weird that our guests are disproportionately male. Like, I'm just DMing strangers on Twitter, asking them to come into my basement. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, patriarchy. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. Patri I'm sure pa patriarchy. I'm with him. <laughs> Neat. Nicole, what segment is it now? Nicole is watching us on a monitor. Yeah, there's a reason that I'm in my own basement right now. Um, yeah, so this is uh, our next segment, which is called Plug the Things That You Do. Squiggles, you go first. <laughs> uh, what do I do when I'm not committing uh, vamp vampire murder? Um, as a tiny chinchilla, you can find me on Terrestrial Radio. Um, yeah, I do a show called The Two to Six Thing with Graham Moseman, because that's my name. Uh, and so that is where I say words for money. On uh, on a radio station here at Edmonton, Trek and ninety five. Took a while, but we circled back. Oh yeah, Trek and ninety five FM in Edmonton. That's where I work. Um, but like also just around on the internet. I mean, I know radio people that its whole personality is like being on the radio. Being on the radio is cool. I don't know. I like other stuff. <laughs> All right. But since you are a radio guy, you can teach us about teach us about sign offs real quick because we're at two hours. Oh boy. Um I end every show saying I had fun. I hope you had fun too. Uh and if you didn't, I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Um or some variation <laughs> of that. Yeah. Uh on for on Friday nights, my very last break of the day, I say have a wonderful weekend, stay safe, we'll talk on Monday, and then I play uh the Friday night song from uh, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. Friday night I'm thinking that we just might fly away to someplace they don't know who we are now i'm riding shotgun in your car we drive through the city like explorers going 65 blowing hair flying across your face we left on friday now it's saturday press jeans buttoned up Jeans, iron slipping up, red shoes walking slow, headphones flaring, three stacks, sunglasses flaring out, thick watch hanging low, studded belt, pole top, three stacks on the radio, Friday night, I'm thinking that we just might run away to some place, we, we can be who we are. We can be who we are.